to the first Patriots post game show of the season. Wish we had some happier news to report, mm. um, but we don't. So we're going to talk about what happened uh, as the Patriots lose 20 to seven. A uh, lot of things to chop up, um, some interesting drama uh, involving, uh, uh, you know, one of the Patriots receivers who was, you know, we got a Malcolm Butler 2.0 situation coming up here. Uh, you have an injury to Mac Jones. That's not a great thing. Um, and just weird vibes surrounding the team right now. So again, uh, you know, Mike Cadlick, uh, Ryan Spagnoli, John Zanis. We were all we 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 all covered training camp at various points in time. Every one of us saw a lot of the things that were going on. And again, there's a whole it's just preseason. Don't put too much stock in it. But the alarm bells and so there's nothing unique about what the three of us will say about this particular, you know, what what's been going on. Basically, that's just what was being reported on by everyone. Offense looked out of sync. Offensive line was a bit of a mess. Um, you know, concern, a lot of concern with what's going on with the coaching staff. Nothing today made you feel any better about that. Doesn't mean it's going to be this way forever, but this was, I'm not going to say the worst nightmare, possible nightmare scenario, but it definitely was just, you just were hoping it would be a little better than this. And the opening drive, to the Patriots' credit, they came out, oh, yeah. and it actually looked like it could work. But um, let's just take a global view before we start to dissect everything. Uh, Ryan, I'll start with you. Just your just general thoughts on this game, especially relative to you know some of the expectations we had for this team coming off the preseason that they had. Yeah, I think it matched all the expectations we had seen. Right, I think, uh, like you said, uh, the first drive it lo- looked really well. They clean for clean pocket for Mac to work with. You know, um, they schemed it up really nice. They certainly came out much better and faster than, than we were used to even last year. Um, and I thought, you know, John, we were texting. I, I thought that was pass interference, but I guess they, they set the standard pretty early. I, I think there was a couple calls after that both ways that they let go, right? They were going to let them play. Uh, but after that, I mean, that, that was kind of a, you know, uh, a deflator for them offensively. I don't remember them getting past the 50 yard line after that. Uh, and And like you said, I think it's, everything we saw in the preseason uh, come into effect today, right? The lack of protection for Mac Jones uh, didn't seem like any separation down the field. Uh, they couldn't cover anybody, right? Their biggest concerns were Tyreek Hill and Jalen Moore. And I think overall their defense played pretty well, right? I mean, you, you went into that game thinking if we can hold Miami to 20 points, they gave up one explosive play that touchdown to Jalen Waddle at the, at the end of the half, which was, was a backbreaker for them. I think that was really the turning point in the game. But other than that as a whole, obviously you lose Adrian Phillips early on in that game. That's somebody that, you know, keep a close eye on, very important piece of their defense. Uh, but overall, defensively, I, I didn't have much of an issue there. I think no, it's not. It's is, is big their problems. It's not that. It's the Look, it's all about the, the defense offense. isn't the focus. Yeah, yeah. it's it, not not because – absolutely, defense had some moments you, you felt okay. I mean, I'll say this. If I'm the Dolphins, you know – yeah, you feel good beating the Patriots. You feel good doing so in convincing fashion. But I'm watching that game, and I'm watching Tua, and I'm thinking, oh, man. you know, like, He still stinks. Because you know your ceiling is what it is as long as Tua is the quarterback. And it's really evident. I mean, you know, like I, I, you know, I, I don't mean to disparage Mac. We know Mac doesn't have uh, the biggest, uh, you know, arm out there. But it really was the noodle arm bowl today. Like, I mean, Tua bounced some passes where you're like, oh, my were you trying to get it all the way there? Like, I mean, it really looked, and it wasn't a just, he fired it low. It just looked like he just lacked the arm strength to get it. It looked like there was no one even there. And that's why I kind of, I kind of hate the, the whole, well, the defense wasn't that bad because I mean, yeah, sure. They were fine, but they also let Tua kind of look like a competent quarterback at times. And he's just not bad. And he stinks. Even he stinks. stinks. And he even tried, he even tried to give them some and they, they didn't take advantage of it. Just yeah. super limited too, right? Yeah. I think that's just the best way to describe him. Is super limited, mm-hmm. super limited. And every time they get him in play action, and he kind of, you know, and he has to drop back, and he's throwing off that back foot. He just looks, re- he just, he gets nothing on those throws. And he uh, looks very he, uncomfortable throwing the ball when he doesn't have time to set his feet and kind of let her rip. He looks really, really, really uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, this isn't the this isn't the Tua show. It's the it's the Pat show, and we're talking about Mac um, and how Mac looked. Uh, and we'll get to the injury later. We don't really know um, full extent. It sounds like, uh, you know, Mac had a back injury. We don't really know when it happened. He uh, went for x-rays, didn't talk to the media. Um, reports afterwards that uh, 
that the x-rays were negative according to Tom Pelissaro. So, uh, you know, hopefully not a big deal, uh, whatever it was that happened to him, but it was enough that he was drawing a lot of attention post game and, uh, and he wasn't able to talk to the media. Um, so whatever it was he was dealing with, we'll see how that plays out, but let's just assess his performance. And again, it's always going to come down to, and a lot of cases you're really not going to know until you can look at things and look at some film and dissect things a little bit better. What's he seeing out there? Were people open? Were they not open? Was it the pressure all, you know, could he have gotten rid of it quicker? There were times at camp where Mac was seeing ghosts, so to speak, you know, um, in this case, it looked like, it just – it didn't look like anybody was super open. I, the biggest concern with me with Mac was the just the, the lollipops he was throwing out there. Yeah. Uh, there were times where he needed to – and that's what you don't know until you really look at it. What was open? Were there windows? Were there opportunities to make plays downfield that he just chose not to because he just doesn't think he's got enough arm strength? There's just – he. I mean, he's just really just lollipopping the ball yeah. all, over the, all over the field here, and that always – that concerns me a, a little bit here. You saw a couple where the D backs were able to catch up and make plays on the ball where guys were clear open just because he's just, you know, so I don't know that that's, that's kind of my read on Mac. And I don't know how much of that had to do with any sort of injury or whatever, but I was hoping after a year of like strengthening this off season, he would naturally just add some RPMs uh, a little bit sure. more. And I just didn't see him deliver anything with any zip today. Well, last year I thought his bill of, excellence if you will was he was he was rather consistent he always played solid football he made the right reads he got the ball where he had to be for the most part today he was he was he seemed wildly inconsistent he had a couple couple trunk plays on that first drive got them into range and then I don't know if it was a combination of some bad calls but I mean there were times where he was just throwing hospital balls up to guys trying to make a play yeah the fourth and one the fourth and one to Parker in the end zone was not good the, there was another one in the middle of the field, the Hunter Henry, that he just I, – I mean, I don't know if that's on him or if it's on the actual play calling, but there were some inconsistent plays out there. From there was one to the sideline on the left, and I can't remember to which receiver where they, they were clear by 10, 50, by, you know. Uh, and he did make two good throws. The mm -hmm. Jacoby Myers one, again, he lofted it up there. Um, that but, was you know, Jacoby too. made a terrific catch. Yeah. And then the one to Kendrick Bourne, which Kendrick Bourne is a whole other story <laughs> we'll get into. Really a couple of quality throws, and everything else was really kind of soft stuff underneath. But, uh, Ryan, your thoughts on Mac? Yeah. And like your you concern said, level, one to ten, watching Mac today. I, I I don't think he's necessarily the problem, right? I, I know mm -hmm. the quarterback gets a lot of the focus, especially when, when the team does bad and, and plays as poorly as they did today. Like you said, I think you can see more when you get the all 22 look, what, what was he looking at? But just from a, you know, the broadcast, right? It didn't seem like much separation, like problems that they've been having for years. The protection wasn't great, especially early on in the first half. Right. And they kind of dug themselves a hole. And, and me and Alex talked about it this week. Like, Heading into this game, it's always a slop fest down in Miami, right? It's you're never out of the game, but things just never seem to go your way. You're always trailing. It's a you know one two possession game. You're in it at the end, and then just it's just too little, too late. Uh, but as for him, right? Like you said, I, I think it's my concern level with him. It's not so much just him. It's it's the pieces around him, right? The offensive line, the play calling, and, and I don't. I talked to Mike about it before. I don't necessarily think you can kind of look back. And besides maybe the fourth and one throw to Parker, maybe mm -hmm. that was the only thing you saw. And they did get bailed out by that, by a penalty. Yeah. Where you were kind of like, what is that play call, right? I don't even think that was much of their problem today. I just think it was lack of separation, lack of protection, and just timely plays. They're still struggling in that explosive category, right? right? The, but the add them together. Mm -hmm. Add it all right. together. That's the problem. Oh, it's it's like, and that, mm -hmm. so that's the, that's the problem with team is, you know, you can defend anything individually like okay can you get can you know the offensive line can you get away with not great offensive line play usually not but there's time for them to gel you know and if you have other pieces around them maybe you can scheme it up um can you get away without having terrific receivers sure if you have the right balance and you have a strong running game and a quarterback who can get the ball there you know can you get by with a weak a quarterback who can't stretch the field and can't press the field with his arm absolutely if you have x y and z you can't have all three things not working and that's the problem is you know mac jones is the type of quarterback who would be ideal under perfect you know he needs things to really you know not be perfect around him, but he needs his pocket. He needs some separation because he's not going to be able to drill in balls to tight windows. And you're not getting either of those things. One hand, you know, like one group can't help the other right now. That's my biggest concern is I don't know where it comes from. They have to 
all of a sudden start clicking on a super high level and operating on a really high level to be able to to get the offense going at all. And th- things have to go perfect for them to perfect. It has to be perfect. Move the ball. Mm-hmm. Right. And that, I, that's just a sign of a weak team and, and uh, an offense with a lot of holes. That's the, right. Because like you said yeah. earlier, their defense played well enough to win. I thought they had timely stops. They kept them. The Patriots had no business being in that game from the, really from the start. No. Um, and, and they kept them in it. They were in it. They had a couple of drives at the end of the game where you're like, Hey, if you can get seven points here, you know, get another stop, you're right back in it. So it's the offense again, which is just, it's, it's a head scratcher really from the start, right? When Josh McDaniels left, it just seemed like there was not a plan. And, and we're still sitting here after week one, uh, kind of with the, this emoji mm-hmm. that we've been feeling like for, for the last six, seven months now. So, and Giants, the narrative that Giants go for two and get it to take a lead over Tennessee, by the way, just we're live updates here. Why not? Um, Anyway, thanks for Alec- ruining my get right par- parlay for the week, John. Yeah. Titans money line. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 that's fine. <laughs> um, but that's the thing is like, I've, you know, I've been, you know, following this team, covering this team uh, for a long time, uh, you know, so we've all been wrong so many times. Um, and, you know, Belichick and the Patriots have been dead and buried so many times before that every reporter has realized it's foolish to rule them out. You know, um, it just feels totally different because right now you're going back pretty much, you know, you know, to the last half of Brady's final season through the cam year and through last year, which I think was a total smoke and mirrors year. They really only had one quality win over San Diego. The other two against winning teams were Buffalo in a snowstorm and Tennessee without a single offensive starter. So that 10 and seven team was honestly probably closer to an eight and nine team. Uh, You know, they were competitive in some other games, but they were, up an improvement over the Cam Newton year, but not, oh, playoffs. Therefore, playoffs last year, another step forward this year. I never really bought that. No. And I think this is the third year in a row where you're really kind of questioning the composition of the roster and whether there's enough talent there. So, again, everything has to be perfect. But you've entered the situation, you've entered this year with the questions on the offensive line and then the coaching situation, which I, you know, I don't know how long you can do this and operate on this level. It may not be all the coach's fault, but everyone in the offense is going to completely lose faith in this system mm-hmm. if you don't see some results soon. The coaching situation just continues to completely baffle me every single day. We talk about it and write about it and tweet about it and look at it. Matt Patricia and Joe Judge can't be your offensive brass. I'm sorry. Like, you have a guy like Mike McDaniel across the way today who, granted, I mean, the the Dolphins offense was fine today. We talked about it a little bit, but at least he's someone who's kind of had the the experience in calling an offense before, and he's someone who's making two attack of Iloa look like okay at quarterback. Mac Jones had a promising year last year with someone like Josh McDaniels. He's gone. They don't replace it. Obviously, this was going to happen, and – it's almost like we're asking these questions, but we already know the answers. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing to me. It's it dates back to you had months to, to prepare for right. something like this. And when you talk about the second year and that jump, especially with a rookie quarterback who, mm-hmm. let's face it, had a really good year last year, considering the circumstances, a lot of he new did. faces on the offensive side of the ball, right? I mean, say what you want, but this is supposed to be an, an improvement for him. You go out, you get Devontae Parker, you upgrade the X position, something they've looked at uh, to try to improve on for years, right? Date back to the Nikhil Harry pick. Uh, somebody that can play outside the numbers. They, they, Matt goes out and improves the arm. Are they going to make more throws down the field? Uh, and this is just, since the since we saw them, since the spring, it's like mm-hmm. one step forward, three steps back, right? And now you're in season. That's even harder to make adjustments from a week-to-week basis, mm-hmm. right? Because you're trying to fix what's right. You're trying to game plan and prepare for the next week. Uh, and, and it's almost too little, too late. I don't want to say that in terms of their season, right? It's all one. No. A lot of things can happen. They started all one last year. Uh, like it's a long year, but when you're seeing repeatedly, especially on the offensive side of the ball, when everybody knows what the game's like nowadays, mm-hmm. right? Like look at these teams around the league, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, even, uh, the Raiders and chargers today, even just look in the AFC, how quickly these teams can get up and down the field and put points on the board. It's a struggle for the Patriots right now to move the ball. Like they, they got past the 50. Was, I think it was three times today. That's yeah. embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Um, and again, it's just you want to hold off judgment. Everybody 
every rational man minded person knows like it takes a while to really understand what a team is. You know, you need to get four or five, six games into the season to get a good idea of who they are. So you can't bury them, but this is that one time where like every single thing you were a little bit worried about, you see it right now. And what I'm looking for is where's it going to come from? What's going to happen. That's going to change it. And that's mm -hmm. what I don't know is in the past. You're like, well, it's Tom freaking Brady, you know, and like he's either, they're gone off the cliff or eventually they're going to figure stuff out because it's Tom freaking Brady and it's Bill Belichick and you know, they're, they're the best of all time. But now right. it's like, what are you, what are you waiting to see happen? Which playmakers on the team are you waiting to unleash who just need more time in the system? You're in year two of Aguilar, year two of Johnu and Hunter Henry. You know who they are. John a gadget guy. Hunter Henry's a good third down guy, uh, you know, and, and, and kind of a safety valve there for your quarterback. Um, you have Aguilar who made one decent play today and then had that horrible fumble. And beyond that, Parker's supposed to be your contested catch guy. Didn't do much of it today. So you're really not I don't know that you – I mean, most, the person I was most excited to see was Tyquan Thornton because he's the only one with, you know, <laughs> game-breaking speed. Right. And you want to see maybe you have something special in that. But I don't know what you're hoping for here, you know. If you've had a big bruising offensive line with backs like Harrison Stevenson, you could say, all right, we'll just bully ball our way into this until things start to kind of click on the uh, – with the passing and the protection and all of that stuff. But you can't get that either. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out where is the relief coming from here. Like where well, – where are you going to see improvements? You believe all of a sudden that Jones, the, the the Patricia Joe Judge thing is going to take hold and people are going to get it? Are they doing you know, like I? Where's it coming? Well, that's from? why I hate the that's why I hate the narrative that we talked about earlier. That oh well, it's only it's only the preseason. It's only preseason. What are you guys freaking out about? We watched it all summer long. We saw it in three preseason games. And we saw them not try to change or do anything besides just stick to their guns. And clearly it didn't happen today, right? And then we think, oh, well, what's going to change? And it seems like the, the only thing everyone's waiting for to change is Mac Jones to turn into that guy. But he doesn't have anything around him to help him do that. So, like, I, he can get there with help. You need a supporting cast, and he doesn't have that right now. And kind of like what you said earlier, Ryan, too little, too late. It's too. It's not too little, too late on the season, but it's almost too little, too late on to on getting Mac that help for the season. If that makes yeah. sense. For sure. No, and, and I like I said, I I don't I won't, don't want to say he played, you know, horrible today, but he wasn't good. Like you no. said, he, his biggest thing no. that carried him for this long was the consistency that he carried himself with. Mm -hmm. Very inconsistent, right? But I think it's hard to point the finger at him, right? That the pieces around him are just not good enough. Uh, the offensive play calling. You you asked John how long till they do this? They they've been rolling with this plan since since March. Like they were, this is mm -hmm. it. Like this is what they're going to have to do at least for this year, right? And then you have to think if it continues this way, when do they scrap this up and be like, you know, we got to get back to our identity with, you know, kind of the smash mouth football. But then you look at it like they have four new starters on their offensive line, guys that should thrive in that kind of zone read stuff. They don't have the linemen to do it either. So it's like. You have to commit to this type of offense uh, at this point. Yeah, and again, I don't know whether it's performance or heat or or management. You know, you saw Strange sit a few series and then come back in the second half. I'm not sure if that had to do with his play. Um, you, all, you also saw uh, Isaiah Wynn sit out for a little bit. You saw Trent Brown sucking wind uh, and not mm -hmm. able to kick out mm -hmm. on some of those run plays either. And this was a – Trent Brown is a type of guy who you like – you saw it all training camp. He was just – walking everywhere and didn't seem to be mm -hmm. giving max effort but also he's a veteran he weighs 700 pounds he's nine feet tall like <laughs> he's a guy who you really want him to conserve his energy for the game but he came out and it was a pretty you know he wasn't having himself a great game either or a great day um as well so i mean that's a person you're expecting to be an anchor of that line um so there's a, there's a lot of problems there for sure mm -hmm. um the other thing and again i i I don't know how much stock to put in this because there's a big freak out over uh, the Kendrick Bourne situation. It is perplexing. I'm not going to pretend that like, you know, if you want to compare it to Malcolm Butler, where some people are, and again, for those uh, who didn't catch the full game or are still catching up on some of the stuff that happened, Kendrick Bourne didn't play a single snap till about six minutes to go, uh, a little under six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. It comes in immediately, makes a 41 yard reception on his, basically his first play from scrimmage. Um, and for a team that's really struggling to make plays, Kendrick Bourne is a guy who came on last year in his first year and actually was, oh, Tennessee might win this one. Where are they now? 
in field goal range. Kendrick Bourne is a guy who meshed with Mac in year one, more, much more so than, you know, maybe with the exception of Henry, mm -hmm. much more so than the other players. Something he did pissed off Bill during training camp had to do with the effort, attitude, offseason he had, whatever that is. Um, so he suits up and he doesn't play. So don't suit him up then. What are you mm -hmm. doing? Proving points? Like, you're not in a position where you can do that right no, now. That's, that was my – yeah, that's the same way I feel. Like this You isn't, can't this do isn't... it. I don't think Kendrick Bourne saves you, but what are we What are we doing it's, that this is a thing where you're sending a message, suiting a guy up and not using him while no one can get open, and, and then you finally try it, and he – And he, it works. Mm -hmm. 41, 41 yards. Harder, makes right. you look, makes you look even bat. worse. At that uh -huh. point, yeah. don't put him in at all. And it's, it's, you need, obviously you don't know the stuff behind the scenes, right? Like what it went on, but I thought embarrassing him enough in that preseason game, right. right. Where his locker was open. He had, he got thrown out of practice and you know, he just doesn't even show up for the game. Like not even on the sidelines. Like that's embarrassing enough. And talk about a guy that I think brought it, brought a ton of juice to that offense last year where that's something you're lacking. You've lacked the whole time. I just, I don't understand it. Like, you know, they have a lot of B receivers, right? It's Kendrick Bourne you know, much better than Devontae Parker or Jupiter Myers, right? Like they all bring something different. I think they're kind of all on that same par level, mm -hmm. but he's somebody that's really good after the catch, somebody that consistently got open. And like you said, built some sort of rapport with Mac Jones last year. And it's just a weekly thing. Now we're going on almost a month, right? Where he's been on the second team. He got embarrassed in a preseason game. They suit him up here today. And I actually give him a lot of credit. Obviously I, I'm not down there, but listening to his post game interview, He's very professional well, about it, right? I'll, I'll Just play that right to... here. I have yeah. it for everybody. I'm going to play. Here's Kendrick Bourne. And again, he could have, he could have, he could have gone off, but he didn't. Here's what he had to say. How would you describe just your emotions after really not playing and, and trying to process what's going on here? Yeah, yeah, just waiting for my opportunity. Yeah, just uh, waiting for the coaches and uh, just waiting for the moment for me to go in. What have they told you about why this is the case? Uh, not sure. Just. Play my role, you know what I mean? So whatever I gotta do, I'm just waiting for that moment. I, I can't really, I don't really know. So just waiting on the opportunity. How frustrating has it been as a coach? It's tough, you know, just keeping my, just keep my mind in it though, knowing my teammates are capable, you know what I mean? It's not about me, it's not, my part is not, it's not about me at all. So um, just waiting for the opportunity, that's all I can really say. Did, did anything happen maybe that you could share with us that you might think? Uh, no, just, not giving the coaches what they want, what they what they need to see. So, just need to get better on my part. Kendrick, you're an overly positive person. Is there a sense of disappointment the way things are going? Yeah, I mean, I look at that right, like you said, could have bashed him. I, I thought that was very professional of him. And like you said, this has been an ongoing thing. I don't understand it, right? I, it, just from being around him, seeing the type of teammate he is, it doesn't seem like he's the guy that's going to pop off at somebody or a coach or, you know, he, he's, he's a, he's a team guy, not a, not a wee guy, right? Like some of these receivers, right. They want the ball. They're kind of that diva mentality. He seems like he wants to win. I don't understand it. And like you said, when nobody else on your wide receiver court really did anything today and you just continuously wait, 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 while you're still in the game, your defense is getting your timely stops. You put him in and you get a 41 yarder and then he's back on the bench. What are we doing here? You're not you're not the same Patriot team you were five years ago where you could afford to do that and still get a win, right? Where you're sending a message. You're not good enough to do that anymore. That's what's frustrating. Uh, the, the 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 world the word that's going to come into play here and the word that I keep thinking of when it comes to Bill regarding this particular team and, and the situation that he is in and that he's been in for the last couple of years is hubris, you know? Um and at some point I there's I don't know who's there to check it right now, you know? It's I don't, I don't need coordinators. I got my guys. As long as they speak my language, we'll figure it out. I don't need this type of guy. As long as I've got that, that's fine. I don't need high price this. I've got my guys. We'll be fine. I don't need that. I don't need this. We'll be fine. We can do it as long as everybody does what I want them to do. Again, this is a system. And again, this is everything is going to be on freezing cold takes when the Patriots rip off six, you know, straight wins and we'll all be wrong and we've all been wrong before but what can you do other than react to what you see right now and what, what i see is you know bill liking to coach a certain way and coach a certain type of people and do things and have people in his organization who get what he's doing and are on the same page and that's the most important thing to him 
but you look around the league and you see, and it's not just friggin' fantasy football highlights, red zone sort of stuff where you see, but you're just, see, you see talent, talent winning out. You see Jamar Chase, you see your Justin Jeffersons, you see these guys just making individual plays all over the field. You see just a higher level of talent at the skill positions and different places where it's just when the, the Patriots just seem to lack it. Um, and then when you don't, and you have people bringing in, talented that hot offensive coordinator to come in and call the plays and and to be the head coach and to run the system uh and you go from having mcdaniels who's one of the best in the business backwards i i don't really understand that um and so that's where you are right now you have a this is the way i do things here and it's worked for me in the past but it's not working and how much longer is it not going to work for before you have to reevaluate it and who's going to reevaluate it there's no, that one. There's no one at that point. It's he's Bill. A, he runs the entire operation. He's yeah. he's not going to get canned. Tyreek Waddle, gonna, look at Miami. You right. know, imagine if Miami had Herbert and not Tua right now. Oh my God! You know, mm. like you'd be it, a different Ooh. ball game. But anyway, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know where that. Again, I just don't know where it comes from. I mean, the thing with Bourne too, staying on that, right? We saw this a little bit early on last year. Like Myers had a tough time getting snaps. I believe it was last year or the COVID year, right? Then he you know, kind of midway through the year, took over the slot, right? So there's still some time for him to earn a, earn a role, and I think he's deservedly, you know, deserving of that. Uh, we saw Stevenson the first four weeks, right? He was in and out, had a timely fumble week one. He was kind of splitting time with J.J. Taylor. Then he took off once somebody got hurt. So there's still some, I think, kinks to be worked out, but he just scored seven points. Like, at that point, like, you got to put Matthew Slater in or something. Like, you know what I mean? Like, lack some – something's got to change. Well, the thing uh, with Bourne and the... an ongoing thing, like you said, it's not just the preseason. Like this is ex- what you saw today is what we saw from OTAs to training camp with shells on to the pads, to the joint practice, to the preseason game. I don't remember a day they won uh, offensively, at least. Right. And the thing with Bourne, I feel like there's been a narrative around him that he's a gamer anyway and doesn't really perform in practice. And so to have these reports coming out about Bourne now that, you know, he's lost his confidence and he was benched for like, I, I was listening to Greg Bedard on the Sports Hub after the game, and he was saying that Kendrick has lost his confidence. He was benched. He's been an annoyance, and they've been unhappy with him. He's still a gamer in the game, and you saw it today. So it's like, wh- what could, and like Ryan, you said it too, that you're, we're not in the building, so we don't know what's going on, of course. But if it has to do with his performance on the field, like he alluded to after the game, he's going to go in there and he's going to make plays regardless. He's going to make it happen. Like, he did it last year, and he did it today this year. They gave him his chance at the end, and he, boom, 41-yard reception instantly. So you have to get that guy in the field. You have to go against your grain. You have to kind of put your ego away if you're Bill Belichick and let this What's offense next? run like away. You just embarrassed him again on week one. Exactly. I don't know. what You're just going to continue to do this and just hurt the team? Because not playing him right now is hurting your team. No, and the embarrassment thing in the, in the preseason what, game, that's a preseason confidence. game. He lost his confidence, then started annoying people, so Bill benched him, or he got benched and lost his confidence. Which one happened first? I, I would, knowing him and the person he is, it seems to be probably when he got benched, right? And that that's controllable. If you want to bench a guy or throw him out of practice for fighting the third week of preseason, mm-hmm. like, but that, that's an integral piece of your offense. Uh, this right. shouldn't be dragged on, right? And like you said, I guess you never know what's going on in there, but just from the person he is being around him the last two years – I have a tough time believing it's something worse where something as bad as you're not playing for me no matter what the, the situation. Right. And he, it's not Especially like Especially with Thornton now. They don't and he didn't right come now. out in the press conference, John, the video you just you just played, he didn't come out in bad mouth or give an attitude to anyone. He just sat there and said, no, I'm just not making the coaches happy and doing what I'm supposed to be, and I just need to keep getting better. He gave the Patriot way answers, even though he, according to reports, is annoyed with the Patriot way. Yeah, and then there was another report. And again, I don't. I'm not trying to make this friggin', you know, House of Dragons palace intrigue drama sort of stuff. But TMZ. You know, no, but I mean Trent Brown also refusing to talk to reporters. And again, I don't know the context there, but it was something else that's put out there. Just that vibe of like when you don't talk, you're mad about something, and you're afraid you're going to say stuff you don't say usually. And that could be, you know. And again, would it? Would it be the most surprising thing in the world? I'm not putting words in their mouth, and I'm not saying anybody's saying this. Would you be stunned if all of a sudden the offensive line is like, yeah, we're playing like crap. There's nobody frigging coach of, coaching us. Our, the offensive line coach is trying to call frigging plays over there. Like, right. we're, we're a mess. We need some help. But, you know, 
I don't know that I don't know if they feel that way. I know that some people have discussed that, and Greg being another one who said kind of like there's so you know there's there's definitely not a positive vibe you know behind the scenes mm-hmm. about what's going on uh, you know in terms of putting people in a position to succeed, and that's always been Belichick's like number one strength. So it is weird to have you know kind of a situation here where that's happening. Um, and it's unfortunate too today too because we talked about it this week like. This is a team you're on par with. I mean, right? Like, mm-hmm. even on paper, they're a much better team. Look at that. You played that bad today, and you were still in the game, right? So this is a game you look back on. If you're in the mix later on in the year, say, damn, I wish we had that one, right? Same mm-hmm. thing as last year. You, week one loss, you, you have that at the end. You're, maybe you're not fighting for Buffalo week seven or week 18 for the division, right? So these are these are meaningful football games, and, you, and you, unfortunately, you pissed down your leg today. Yeah, you did. I like how you said that. Um, you did. Um, I don't know that the Patriots are necessarily – um, as talented as Miami, um, I don't think they are. I think talent is a problem. So I think they have to get by with being the Patriots, which is right. super coached, uh, super well coached, and uh, and w- w- with you know uh, top tier, you know top t- highest level execution. So everything that they go to do, they have to do it well. Um, you know, I'm not going to say the execution was horrible today. There were plays. There were some problems with the offensive line. Uh, and then the turnovers are really what killed them. So you're right. Mm-hmm. I, I hate doing the whole, well, if we didn't turn it over. I mean, look, the Patriots made a living on that, is turning other teams over, making them make mistakes, making them beat themselves, and then beating you. So you, you can't say that's a thing that you do and then not, you know, uh, give the other team credit when that happens to you as well. Okay? You, you turned it over. They made you turn it over. That's that, you know, yep. it, it, it is what it is. So uh, you have to not do that, but you do really need to play a near clean, um, perfect game, which the Patriots at this point, I just don't think are capable of doing. The strip sack for a touchdown in the moment, I thought that's on Mac Jones. You have to no. see that blitzer coming. I know. Belichick, uh, Belichick didn't right. sound like that. That's what I was going to say. Hunter Henry should have chipped him. Hunter Henry after should, the, you know, like. Yeah, after the game came out and they kind of said Bill Belichick or Belichick kind of cleared that we up. Had, we had enough guys to block that. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, still it's whether that was on Mac or whether that's on ch- tight end chipping or Trent Brown moving out towards, towards the left to get that guy. It's, it's bad execution and it leads to turnover and it leads to a touchdown. So like you, you only allow 13 points on defense, but you let up an extra seven with your offense. That is true. Yeah, um, and- I don't know. Hold on one second. It is uh it was a frustrating one for sure. Um because I, I, somebody said it here in the chat, you know, you do wonder what happens if they don't throw that pick or if pe- or if a PI is called there, um is it different? Um I don't know. I wonder. You know, you wonder there if they don't turn it over, can they stay in this? Yeah, maybe. Um they they maybe could have. And again, I think Miami is you know, on paper more talented, but I think again they have a they're beatable. You can they're, beat they're, that they're, team. they're yeah. really beatable because again, they have a ceiling. I actually coming into this game, despite my prediction was Patriots were going to win because I actually thought uh, Bill versus the rookie head coach and Tua, they're not going to let Tua beat him. Um, and I, I kind of thought they could have still squeaked this one out despite the fact that they didn't really play well. Mm. Um, so yes, this is a beatable team. There's plenty of beatable teams on the schedule. They do have a tough schedule. You have Pittsburgh next week. They've got some injury concerns as well. So yeah, I mean, TJ Watt, Najee Harris. I mean, mm. TJ Watt seems like he's done for the year. Najee Harris left the game early with, I believe a foot injury. That's never good. They said Um, afterwards, it wasn't, yeah, they said after it's not as bad, but again, are you worried about Mitch Trubisky? No, you're not ever, you know, Ever, ever, ever. Well, we weren't worried about about Tua. Yeah, I know. But they do have other weapons, and it's Miami is Miami, and they've lost, you know, four straight there. So uh, that's always an issue. I want to tell people uh, real quick uh, before we uh, um, move on, and we'll keep talking here about our sponsor, uh, Athletic Greens. Are you guys into this stuff? I'm into this stuff. No? I am. I've had it before. It's great. You should get some. I've got some right here and right here. Uh, we all use it. It's a big thing on the garden report. We use it a ton. Um, so I would like you guys here, Patriots people, you're into health, right? It's the fall. It's going to clean up your act. Um, it's uh, uh, kind of an all-in-one uh, supplement here. 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole sourced, uh, whole food sourced ingredients, probiotics. Uh, I always get this one wrong, but adaptogens to help you start your day right. Um, 
Why do I do it? Makes me feel good. I've been taking it for the last month or so. Um, it's uh, good for digestion. It's good for energy. It's good for your immune system. It's so super easy. It's basically one scoop in the morning, small cup of water, boom, you're done. Three bucks a day. If you went and shopped this stuff out lots of different places, you'd probably be spending $10, $15 getting a bunch of different things. This is all in one place. It's uh, any sort of diet friendly, vegan, paleo, keto, whatever you have. Uh, no no GMOs, no nasty chemical, artificial stuff. Uh, supports better sleep quality and recovery, mental clarity and alertness. Um, so it really has everything you hear you, 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 you would want here in a kind of a one and done supplement. Uh, it's endorsed by... It's got 7,000 five-star reviews uh, recommended by pro athletes, leading health experts, celebrities, what have you. So uh, again, this is a product that a lot of people really vouch for. Um, we vouch for it as well. So again, go check it out, athleticgreens.com slash garden. Um, that's athleticgreens.com slash garden. Uh, go check it out. You will get uh, what it says on the screen here one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs. So it's a good little bonus there. If you go check that out, if you're a fan of basketball, we have garden report t-shirts. We can send along uh, here. Any of fans of the show, that guy right there. We'll send you a t-shirt as well. If you DM me with a receipt um, showing that you supported uh, our sponsor here, athletic greens. So uh, guys, uh, other thoughts here, other takeaways, we mentioned the defense, um, playing uh, relatively well. What were your thoughts there? Anything that kind of stood out? Kyle Duggar certainly was all over the field um, early in that game, made some big plays. I thought they covered relatively well, um, minus a couple of slip-ups there, and that was a Duggar missed tackle really there on that pl big play by Waddle there at the end of the half, which really was a backbreaker. But on the whole, it was a pretty solid defensive performance. Yeah, I thought, too, even even when you lose Adrian Phillips, a big piece of your defense, they were able to kind of hold it together. I thought Jonathan Jones, once again, did a pretty good job on Tyreek Hill. I know eight catches for 94 yards, but nothing really too major, right? Made a couple nice catches in some tight coverage. Uh, Kyle Duggar, I thought, was your best player on the field. Uh, but lack of a pass rush, I thought, too, had, you know, a little bit too much time. I thought this was a game that if the Patriots were going to win, they had to dominate in the trenches and, and just – not enough juice there, I guess. But from a, from a secondary perspective, I thought they played pretty well considering, right, the one backbreaker that Jalen Waddle touched down on fourth down with 20 seconds to go in the first half. That really killed me, right? They were out of timeouts. They were kind of in that in-between zone where they're not going to kick a field goal and turn the ball over. They go for it and put seven points on the board. That killed them, right? But I think Kyle Duggar certainly continues to make strides as one of their top safeties. Uh, Miles Bryant struggled uh, big time. Yeah, I thought he, he, had, he had some tough plays. Uh, John jo uh, Jack Jones, sorry, there's so many Jones in this team. Um, struggled a little bit, obviously, with a big assignment on Tyreek Hill for, for some of the game. So, um, yeah, I, I thought the defense played well enough to win. They got timely stops, especially when they went down early. Uh, and the offense just couldn't yeah, look, help Larry football. Again, and you can do that because Miami has a tool problem, and they don't have super dynamic running backs as well, so you're not really worried there. Um, they're not going to necessarily beat you in the run game. Um, they have you know, they have terrific weapons on the outside there with Waddle and, uh, and, and Hill. This might be the fastest wide receiver combo uh, in the league right now. So, yeah, they've got guys who can beat you, but the Pats did a good job, minus that Waddle play, of keeping them from, you know, uh, beating them downfield again, you know, I don't know what Tua's kind of got in the bag there to be able to pull that off, you know, and again, I, I recognize Max in the same boat, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I still think the Patriots are firmly behind the Dolphins in the division, at least where things stand right now. Um, they have to prove that they can play better than that because Miami didn't play that particularly well either uh, and still managed to win this one 20 to seven. So I think they're ahead of them. You want to think that you want to hope that the Patriots are certainly ahead of at least the Jets. We watched the Bills play already. They look like they play a different sport. So I don't even want to, I don't want to, I don't, I don't, I, I don't even want to be here when that, when those games happen. Um, so, it's 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 a long way to go, man. I don't know. Du I, D Duggar was a beast, like we said, as a box safety, making you know a bunch of tackles, a couple of tackles for loss. But in a game where thirteen point, like I, I said it before, but thirteen points on offense, seven on the other end, won the strip sack. If you make that one play, you're right in the game. Instead, you let them score fourth and seven with twenty four seconds left, whatever it was, by on a bad, bad missed tackle by Kyle Duggar. Duggar was great, but you can't. You have to be more consistent. I mean, it's that's just the way it is. And the, I've talked about it before, but the speed in the middle of the field that I've kind of been touting this whole summer, 
yeah, they they let Tyreek like I I don't know the middle of the field. I thought they improved it. Tua was I I found this on Twitter. Tua was five of seven for 106 yards and a touchdown on passing plays between 10 and 19 yards with a pass rating of 153.3. You have to be able to cover the middle of the field better because everyone's getting the ball at guys in space now, and you just got to be able to do it. The benching of Anf- er, the not benching, but in a- inactivation of Anthony Jennings was a question mark to me too. I don't really know why they did it. I don't know what you guys have for thoughts on that, but they lacked a little bit of speed there on the inside because of that too. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm still looking for the positive. Right. Um, I don't know that we're going to find it. I guess like letting up 13 points is something to build off of, but it wasn't very impressive. Like it just wasn't, and, you know, you look to the September is a tough schedule for him, right. To try to, I guess, focus on the positive or turn the page next week. You get a winnable game next week. You come home versus a Baltimore team that, you know, obviously beat up on the jets today, but mm-hmm. I think there's some, there's some holes in that team as well. And then you obviously head to, to green Bay to finish out the month and you have an October schedule where it's pretty, you know, friendly for you to, to pick up some wins and, and, and yeah. kind of find your identity after September. So like I said, looking ahead, trying to be a little more positive. Uh, I think it's a big week for them to get right in Pittsburgh. Okay. Well, another game what, they can win. It's winnable, another, man. I mean, right. again, it's, it, it was the start to the season. That's the problem. That's the, uh, that's what's tough with the Patriots is um, it's, it's a relatively soft start. Um, but, that's also the time they're trying to figure themselves out. So you don't want to be kind of taking your lumps early and giving away, you know, winnable games against teams like the Steelers. You know, I, again, I expect the Ravens, you know, would be a tough challenge here. Packers look like absolute, you know, what um, yeah. today, uh, just dreadful. Uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers just pouting and wouldn't throw to any receivers all game. And not that they necessarily have any receivers to throw to, but that doesn't look like a super potent team. The lions, are the Lions, the Browns are the Browns, then the Bears. I mean, that's a soft start, you know? There's a world in which the Patriots could have ripped, and then it's the Jets. I mean, there's a world in which the Patriots could have ripped off a 6-1 and one start if everything was going right without even really playing great. So they got to figure it out now. If you muck this early part of the schedule, things get brutal later on. Yeah. Um, and so you do have to start. You don't have time to figure yourselves out. You have to tighten it up and start stacking up wins. The Packers did that last year, though. They did lose to the Saints week one. They got spanked by the Saints, and then they ended up rattling a bunch off. So I think yeah. that Aaron Rodgers and that team just kind of eases into it, but he's still yeah. a, he's still a whiny baby. But what, what we're not discussing here is also the possibility that Mac Jones is actually hurt, hurt. Um, so we yeah. don't know. If that happens, we'll turn out the lights, guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's over. <laughs> that's going to be – What do you that, do? Do you, you play Brian Hoyer? Hoyer? Do you yeah, trade for just... Jimmy Garoppolo's shorter contract now? <laughs> no. I think yeah. you just, you'd, like you said, John, you shut the lights off. Let's look ahead to next year. Let's get a good draft position. I know we're talking about this after week one. But like you said, back injuries are could be major, could be super yeah. minor. But obviously something you don't want to be dealing with as a quarterback, especially at that position. So obviously you don't want to speculate that the x-rays are negative. Somebody who's had back problems in the past, um, a back surgery, you don't really see much on an x-ray. It's more an MRI because a lot of this mm-hmm. stuff, that's the stuff you worry about with him. Um so, like I said, you'll probably know more earlier this week. Maybe it was precautionary. He didn't want to talk, and it's kind of their way to get out of it. But that's what I think. Too. Uh, something to look ahead to. They do sure. that sometimes, but usually, you know, it, like I said, is, uh, you know, and I, I believe it was, uh, let me see if I can find it. Might have been Mark Daniels who kind of went by the blow by blow. And it just sounded like, you know, everything was weird. Like, you know, and I'll go through what Daniels reported here on the uh, Providence Journal. Clock hits zero. Jones sprints off the field. Uh, first person to kind of run into the tunnel here. And again, just uh, updating people at home about what's going on. Uh, Mac Jones um, suffered a back injury, did not speak to the media. Um, so I'm just going to go over what Daniels reported here. Uh, sprints off the field. Um and then uh, when they get, you know, back to the uh, post-game media, Jones slowly walks towards the x-ray room with several Patriots medical staffers. Um, 
and Paul Cusick, who's the Patriots head of internal medicine. Um, then he goes back to the locker room. Once there, uh, Jones immediately goes into the trainer's room with several Patriots staffers outside the door, leaves the trainer's room, sits down in his locker with his head down. The trainer comes over, talking to him at some point, asking him to move his head in different directions. He gets back up, goes back into the trainer's room. Then Belichick goes to the podium, says, I don't know if anything's wrong. I haven't talked to anybody. And then after that happens, uh, it's uh, the Patriots PR staff announces that Jones is not uh, going to speak to the media. So that's what happened there. We're going to bring in Alex Barth as well who's going to enlighten us, illuminate us on what we saw down in Miami, try to make us feel better. Alex, are you going to bring in some sunlight here? Let's hear it. Um, or I, I, are, you, I, are you all gloom and doom? Well, I don't know where, I don't know what you guys have said. Um, it's season I guess gloom and doom. Well, so so <laughs> okay. I guess my, my positive and negative are one and one. When your defense allows 13 points in the NFL, you should win the game. Patriots mm -hmm. defense allowed 13 points today. You know, seven points off the, the, the strip sack fumble, right? Patriots defense allowed 13 points today. I, I know two is not a world beater at quarterback, and he probably helped them out a little bit, but I thought they made some plays defensively. I think the defensive front more or less looked like what you'd hoped it would look like. Constant pressure for Matthew Judon. Uh, Dietrich Wise, I thought, had a very good game today. Uh, I liked what I saw at the second level. I thought Juwan Bentley played pretty well. Raekwon McMillan got a ton of run. That was encouraging. Could have had some better plays in the secondary. Like, they held Tyree Kill under 100 yards, I thought, with, you know, they weren't, like, doubling him and tripling him. Jack Jones grabs that pick. It's probably a different conversation. That's kind of the, you know, that. And then, obviously, the play at the end of the half you don't want. But let's put it this way. If that play at the end of the half was the worst play the Patriots made today, it'd be annoying. It'd certainly be annoying. There's no excuse for that, especially out of the, the timeout. But but it's not a problem I, in a in a thirty to thirteen win. Right. You're not I even think worried about it. We'd be like, oh, happened. that was. We'd be like, oh, that was weird, right? You know, I'll say the same about Mac Jones. I see a lot of people second guessing Mac Jones today. Is Mac Jones the guy? If Mac Jones' performance was their biggest issue today, they would have been okay. Like that. That would have been wouldn't be great, but that would have been fine. I think when you look at just. The the offensive line communication still looks like it's a mess. The overall offensive picture is still way too cloudy. You know, we heard Bill talk this week, and this is something that's gotten brought up a lot the last couple of weeks, right? That, you know, Bill believes the first month to six weeks are an extension of the preseason. This game was everything that that suggests, right? Sure. They're making these weird personnel changes. The whole Kendrick Bourne, Kendrick Bourne thing might be its own thing, but him not playing like, there still just seems to be zero direction offensively. I don't think you could expect for much more from Mac Jones today than what he did because they're not, you know, giving him a ton, right? You know, I, I was texting somebody earlier, like the analogy for me with Mac Jones. Yes, Mac Jones is going to be like some world beater playmaker quarterback. That's never who he was going to be. The idea is he's the bus driver and he will get you where you need to go. But if you give him a bus with flat tires and a busted transmission, he's not a mechanic. He's not going to fix the bus. I know, but is he even that good a bus driver? And again, that's what people are starting to question is if you look at each group on its own, you can make an issue with each one. So you, the receivers could say, well, if I had a quarterback who had an arm, he could drill it into some windows because I did have, I was open by a step, but Mac's not going to be able to get it to me there. So I might as well be blanket covered. Or if the offensive line saying, well, the guy can't this, 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 and that, like, Anybody, you, you you work in, like I've worked in a newsroom for 25 years. The assignment desk thinks the reporters are idiots. The reporters think that the producers are idiots. The producers think the editors are idiots. And round and round we go because everyone's like, well, I'm doing the best I can, Tom, but, I X, but X, so Y, and Z. And so I'm not blaming Mac. All I'm saying is you're looking for someone. The sad thing is, is you're almost looking to Mac to save you and him not right. being able to do so because of who he is, is what he's being judged but for I, less than the fact that he's I not think, doing I think, a decent if job. If you're asking yeah. your second year quarterback to bail you out of this, like, look, if it was just, hey, you know, Cole Strange is a new starter on the offensive line. That's manageable. If it was just, hey, we're not going to play your most dynamic receiver today. I don't want to say that's manageable, but it's, they should have enough to get by. It's, we, you it's, missed that. That was like it's just not the time to to, yeah. to make an example of somebody when you lack uh, offensive. They're, they're team, asking that's him your to, one guy. It's it's four new starters on the offensive line. It's this weird wide receiver, you know, arrangement. It's I forget the play calling. The playbook didn't look inspired. 
it, they're asking him to put out too many fires, which you just can't ask your second year quarterback to do. So John, like I agree in that sense. They're just asking him to fix more than he can fix. I don't think that's an indictment on Mac Jones because I would say the majority of second year quarterbacks can't fix everything they're asking Mac Jones they to can't. fix. It's just too much. Let me ask you this question though. And saying saying Mac Jones isn't good enough to dig them out of all these holes, I don't think is a hot no, take. Like, yeah, it's not that you you. you you want to see things, right? Like if you're going to say the it's an extension of the preseason, you don't just want to see execution. You want to see things that are going to give you confidence that there are brighter days ahead. So I, I'll use a crude golf analogy, but when I golf and I'm like rusty, I I like I feel much better about it when I'm making solid contact, even if I'm spraying it all over the place because I feel good. I'm hitting my clubs the right length and I'm just off, but. It's there. The stroke is there. The power is there. Whatever it is that I want, and I feel okay. Rather than scull it down the down the down the fairway, 150 yards, and be in play for my second shot, I feel shittier on the second one. So if Mac Jones was out there, and you saw in year two that arm strength was a little bit better, and he ripped a few throws downfield, and that was promising because once they get in sync, that's going to be good. But instead, I'm seeing lollipop throws all over the field, and you're like, how are they going to move the ball here with that? So this offensive line and those weapons, I don't see I don't see how it comes together. That's my fear is all, all those three pieces, I don't seem that they're they've got issues that it's gonna be difficult for one to pull everybody in and, and make it work together. So uh, I'll, I'll, in on the, on the arm strength, it's gonna be really interesting to see or hear when he hurt his back because uh, I agree. Is, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But all right, so all you want you want the contact, I'll give you the contact here, I'll give you the rub. And, and I this, this doesn't I I tweeted this out before the Patriots last drive that ended with the fumble. So the second number might be a little higher, but on their scripted drives, the Patriots scripted drives, the first drive of each half, yep. they added six point, they, they averaged 6.3 yards per play. That's the first drive that that it was pass interference in the end. Like I, Parker needs to be more aggressive to go to that ball, but that drive really sure. should have ended. In, and then the second drive, which did end in points, 6.3 yards per play on the scripted drives on the other drives. 2.9 yards per play. Obviously, yep. well short. What's the difference? What's the difference between the scripted and the non-scripted? Well, I just think they took a much more panicked approach when it wasn't scripted, which is not the best sign for Matt Patricia. I, that that's kind of a. I don't know that that means anything or not. I got to go back and, and I'm going to do it after this and go back and rewatch the game and kind of see what the difference was there. But yep. there's your contact. The scripted drives, they looked good. That opening drive, they looked good. They were moving the ball. They were running it. They were throwing it. Uh, they were picking up yards after the catch, which was an issue last year. Jacoby made that high point throw. That That's a catch that has not been in his But again, box I'm not making years. it all Mac-based. I'm saying, wouldn't no, you I'm not either. I'm telling you the Wouldn't offense. you have loved to see a, a couple receivers running free and Mac just missing them and being like, oh, they're getting separation. There's something there. It's going to happen. Instead I would say that, that did yeah. happen with Aguilar. I know there was at least one. I want to say maybe mm -hmm. two with Aguilar. Yeah. There was one down the sideline when he missed them. Um, and there was he one... Did with i think it was johnny smith i forget it was late in the first half that was yeah. a similar there were a couple of those. Yep. there yeah no mm -hmm. there there definitely were like like that's the thing but he I made think... some big throws the, the myers throw was perfect the one to kendrick and the born right? throw like, yeah. yeah honestly those i think two, the those two have throw, a connection there the park was a good ball was too picked, that's where you put that throw because yeah that's either a spot the throw. wide receiver you're throwing gonna, that to a spot. right you're putting it to your big 50 50 ball receiver he's either going to go get it or the corner's going to have to run through him and it's P.I. Parker just overran it. He Nelson Aguilar it, like from the playoff game last year against Buffalo. And again, this isn't a blame Mac for all of their problems. I'm saying Mac has an undue amount of, uh, you know, stress and pressure to yeah. kind of make it, like make magic happen. And, and, and it's yeah. not athletic and, and it's enough that, to be and able it's to extend can. plays. Yes. Right. When when things go wrong and you see it's, these he's guys not like that a guy. Kyler Murray yeah. or a Patrick Mahomes, right? Not to compare him. He's never going to be a guy like that. He was never expected guys, to be. No, absolutely not. Right. But that becomes you need to have a better team around you because if things exactly. don't go perfect or or how they should, he doesn't have the talent and the athleticism to be able to extend plays with his legs, get outside the pocket, make a throw on the run. Like he's limited in that sense. And I'm not saying they can't win with him. I think he's a great leader, somebody that you want in a franchise quarterback. They just need to do a better job of building around him, and they haven't done that since, you know, they turned the page from last season, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah.
I, it, yeah, no, I'm not, I, 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 so I think we agree on that. Like, it's not a Max not good enough. It's they're asking no. Mac to do more than, than it, they realistically should ask. In order do. for it to write, it need, Mac needs to be a, a miracle worker right now. And, but and I guess what I would say some. is, I think there are some people out there who think that there is another option. At court, and I don't know who that supposedly is. Like, Patrick Mahomes? Yeah, probably could, but you're not getting him, right? I think there's some people that ex that think that there is some other option out there of some guy they could get who could kind of tie all this together. That guy doesn't exist, and it's not, oh, well, they should have moved up and get Justin Fields. Justin Fields dealt with a lot of similar problems last year in Chicago. That didn't go well, right? Oh, well, they should just tank and get somebody in the draft. All right, so we're back to this again, and it's the same thing where they could draft somebody with more physical talent, fine, but if you put the kid in the same situation, you're probably going to see similar results because it's a learning process. So I just, I, I again, I have trouble putting this on Mac. I do. It's not I think on it's Mac. It's a situational thing. Yeah, it's not on Mac. When we arrive at it, when we talk about everything that's going on, then it really, if you are, if you have a quarterback that can only, that can do certain things and is more of a game managing bus driver, as you said it, you have receivers that are really more like threes and fours rather than ones and twos or even twos and threes on good teams there's not a single Patriots receiver that's that's a top two receiver on one of the on the better offenses in the NFL no 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 chance um so if you have all of that and you have some issues then it really comes down to coaching and this is where I think most of the heat is actually going to fall on here is yeah it's unrealistic and unfair to tell Mac to fix it but it is not unrealistic to tell Bill Belichick and the coaching staff to fix it. And that's where everyone's going to turn a lot of their focus to is what are you guys doing to make this better for them? You can't just shrug your shoulders and say, well, we didn't make the plays and we didn't whatever you got to, you have to do something right now. And I, I don't know, Alex, how long you think this judge Patricia situation can be allowed to continue. Yeah, no, I think that's a good point. You know, some people are talking today about like, oh, is Bill on the hot seat? Is his job in jeopardy? I, he, he's going to get through the season. Like that's... Of it, course it, he's going to get through the if season. If they start out next year like this, maybe you have that conversation. The real conversation to have here is when do they... I don't know who it would be. Whether it would be Adam Gase, hopefully not, or it would be, you know, somebody else who gets let go elsewhere. How? When do they hire an offensive consultant? Right, that to me throw is them the in mid season though. Yeah, to bring a guy in mid season like that, that's not gonna. I mean, is that really gonna go over well in your locker room though? Like, is that gonna are that you bring in a guy and it's not like, okay, gonna go coming. over any worse than averaging two hundred seventy yards of offense? No, I'm not. I'm just saying it's it's too. We'll, no, we'll I'm, not saying, I'm not saying they should. But, I'm not saying they should. I'm saying that is the no. that is the like where is the leash on this question? Like that's really right. how to frame no. it is. Yeah. At what point do they bring somebody else in to clean this thing up? And Ryan, Ryan did have to peace out. Um, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna put a bow on it. That's the thing is, can would Bill? And again, you know, the the, the word I threw around earlier is hubris. Right now, it will, you know, Bill has always done things his way, and it's always worked, and there's been no reason to question it. Do you believe he's going to all of a sudden be like, oh, I was totally wrong about this thing. Everybody said I was totally wrong about, you know. And like, yeah, all of the idiot media and all of the pundits absolutely were right. They what were am right. I doing having these guys coach this team, uh, coach the offense? I absolutely need to bring somebody in because none of us are well equipped enough to do it. How, what are the chances Bill does that? If, if it's going to happen, and this is where you said Bill hot seat. Bill's not going anywhere this year. And I don't think Bill's going to start next year and then be on the hot seat. The hot seat's going to be, if things go horribly wrong or continue on this path, it's going to be an uncomfortable conversation where Robert finally has to say, so this whole GMing thing isn't going great. You're obviously still a great coach, but what can we do here to fix that? And, and then Bill's going to have to decide whether or not, yeah, I do need help here. And I do have to bring in some outside perspective and people who see things through a different lens or screw you my way or the highway. And that's where things are going to get interesting. Yeah. It's never going to be Bill is flat out fired or tossed aside it's going to be a can we get you some help bill and whether or not he's willing to accept it so do you think he would be you think he's going to make that choice on his own to to bring in like, to bring in offense. outside help to to say that yeah my, what i think what i think works isn't necessarily working i need to bring in some people and that could be whether it's on the personnel side and drafting or whether it's on the uh so, you know offensive side of the ball to come in here and kind of devise new ways to do things I mean, look, he's 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 done it before. I mean, it was under different circumstances, but they brought McDaniel's back, 
right when Bill O'Brien was still here. And again, it's 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 not quite apples to apples because that was in the playoffs and McDaniel's was leave, uh, O'Brien was leaving. But I, I he's not gonna say, say that was one of his Bill. guys though. That's and one no, of his guys. But that's why so I'm saying like Scar. When they brought Scar back, that's one of his he's guys. Not, he's not going to bring well, his one guys of his never guys never work. It's going to be exactly. It's right. going to be one of his guys that gets you know let go elsewhere. But I, I it's not going to be a oh, I was wrong. The media was right. I need to change this. Of but course, that's somebody's going to say. But I'm saying it will be this. I need to do this to help me catch Shula. That's what it'll be. Well, geez, that's what I watched football for. Yeah, right. O- old guys breaking other old guys' records. At this point, you know, don't you just owe it to your team and to the personnel and to the people there who are kind of like, uh, is someone here going to tell me where I'm supposed to go? Well, you know, I, I would say yes, do? but aren't we? I think we're past that point. So, but if I mean, it were, uh, if it were about you, that, how quickly do you lose people, though? How quickly does this turn into 2009? Very soon. If it's not already there. Right. Well, I mean, Look at Kendrick Bourne. Look you don't at know and, what's and going again, on there, but look at Kendrick Bourne. I would argue that's that's a very 2009 ish occurrence. Yeah. And, and again, look, so, I'm not going to yeah. say that they they're, they're past the point of no return. They're not right. If they clearly not, you know, get in the lab, figure it out next week. Actually, put Kendrick Bourne out there. Steelers passed. I I know they had four picks, but they didn't look amazing today. Like Joe Burrow just didn't look great. There's a lot thought, of beatable teams early in this slate. You come out next week, you throw for 300 yards on, on Pittsburgh. Bourne goes off for 120 and a touchdown. Everything's hunky-dory, right? You've got Yo, to Bourne out, going but... off for 120 and a touchdown is the same thing as Malcolm Butler getting three picks in the first game of the following season. I don't want to he- – if that happens, I'm going to be angry, not happy. Right. But No, I would be angry too, but Bourne <laughs> went for a third of that today easy. <laughs> on, on two snaps, he went for a third of that. No, it would be annoying. It would be. It would be because it'll we'll get late in the Bourne's going to come back, have a great year. It's going to be late in the season. They're going to need like one game for something yep. in the standings. And we're going to say, well, if only Kendrick Bourne had played in Miami. Like, and that's, that's where how, I'm not going to get into happen. it. It's like, let's not pretend we everyone right. thought Kendrick Bourne was the world beater that he kept out of there. That would have been the difference. It's just, I don't understand what you're doing here. Uh, you know, and why you're doing it at this point. Why even dress him if you're still sending a message? None well, of we've it been makes... asking that question since the Eagles Super Bowl. None of it makes sense. And it very much is the Eagles Super Bowl situation. They're like, what do you, why even dress him? Just to show the world that like, you're going to sit there and you're going to be embarrassed for the whole game and everyone's going to wonder why you're not playing. I don't really get that. But And it just looks worse on him. Yeah. It doesn't like embarrass him. And no one's sitting here like, oh, yeah, Kendrick Bourne. He was really embarrassed today. You know, Bill really showed him. We're all saying, what the heck was that? It doesn't It doesn't solve anything. It doesn't solve well, anything inside not, or outside. It's not to show point. us. It's to show. And, and and Bill said it wasn't disciplinary. I don't know that I totally right. buy that. Just like. He wouldn't tell us if it was. I don't in, think. In general, like when these sort of things happen, right, just from being around sports teams and all of that, the message is to the rest of the team. The message is to Bourne. It's. You did something where now we saw you unfit to play and look what you look at the situation you left the team in. Like that's the, that's I, I don't know exactly what's going to be on behind the scenes, but Mike, you've played on teams. Like, you know, like when you bench a player, that's the point. It's look at the situation you put the right. team in by your actions. You need to be more team oriented. Right. I'm not saying that that's like that Bourne did something that deserved that treatment, but that's generally that's what the, the intended message is behind these things. Right. For better or worse. Yeah, for, sure. for, for better or for worse. And I don't know that Kendrick Bourne necessarily makes the difference today. Um, but again, if you you're know. searching if you're searching for offense and you bring a guy in and he immediately well, goes for, you know, 41-yard completion down the sideline. That crossing route, that Aguilar fumble, that was Bourne's route last year. Yeah. yeah. Bourne's a little more adept at putting the ball in his hands in that spot. So I'll say Good that. point. That's a good point, too. Um, so uh, the doomsday question I'll ask, and then we'll kind of wrap it up. Um uh, we do know that Mac went in for x-rays. Tom Pelissaro um, reported, NFL Network reported that it was, uh, they were negative, but he still could be, who knows? We don't know. Um, if you have Mac, if let's, okay. Obviously if Mac has to miss a game, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's not great because you really don't want to start the season. 0 two, what happens here if Mac is out for a, a stretch, if he, if he were hurt, what do you do if you're the Patriots? You do you, you stick it out with Hoyer, or you do you call up San Fran and say, "Hey guys," and then I don't know how willing they'd be to part with Jimmy G after watching Trey Lance today. But um, do you start looking for help, or do you just try to hold the line? 
if he's out for the season, I start looking for help. Not like, season, sure but let's say for, you think he's got to go short term IR or something like that. I wouldn't go to Jimmy G. I'd go to somebody else. I just think there's too many issues with Garoppolo here and just with I'm not saying the, he's the you, answer either. If you go yeah. to Garoppolo, you're gonna be in the exact same spot in probably three weeks, right? I, I don't know. Like maybe you go look. I don't know who's yeah, I go who? look at who I'd go look at who's on practice squads. Um yeah, I, I don't Tom, know. Skylar Thompson from Miami no, had a pretty not. good preseason. I, yeah. I think you Well, that's the thing. It's it's not there. Absolutely. At that point, you just stick it up with Hoyer. The more the more I think about it, no, you go with Zappy. Zappy. Because one of two things is gonna happen. He's gonna suck. You don't rush Mac back, you get a high draft pick. Or he's gonna be good, and all of a sudden you have a valuable commodity. I go with Zappy. It's not going to happen. Would, Bill would never do that. Happen. Yeah. No, but. <laughs> but I like the thing. Uh, yeah. Al, Alex, I agree a hundred percent. I would absolutely do the same thing. I just don't believe, I don't think Bill does that. They didn't, they didn't look to upgrade. No eight. And that was a team that could That's win true. a Super Bowl, and they didn't look to upgrade. No eight. They rolled with Matt Castle, who was in yeah. a contract year, who was a movable asset. Yeah. I would, I would argue the precedent suggests that, be- and they're not, I mean, they're not going to get anything for Hoyer. If he okay. Plays, Councilman. No. Okay, Mr. I'm just Attorney. Saying. I would the precedent states. No, I, I I get the point. I get the point. I just think at this point in Bill's career, I don't think he can risk um a two and a two and fifteen. You know what I mean? Like I just I don't but think he, he can, can also sit on the fact that he could sit on the fact that Mac was hurt all season and then he has another right. excuse. So Bill Bill knows there's smoke out there right now, and I know he says he doesn't care, but he's aware. I don't think he, you know. He cares. We all. Know I don't. Th- I don't think he can eat. You know, a, a rebuild right. and 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 look at the glasses half full that we get a draft pick and I get this guy some reps and see if he can actually play, which I don't think he can. I mean, do you think he can? I know you're a zappy guy, Alex. I, like, can you, he beat Detroit? He loves you some zappy. Can he beat Detroit? No. Can he beat yeah. out Mac Jones in a quarterback competition? Oh no. Okay. No. <laughs> can he beat Detroit? Yeah. yeah. Why? Yeah. Uh, assuming Kendrick Bourne plays, like, yeah, because he's okay. accurate. Okay, I guess. Okay, maybe. Hopefully, maybe. we don't have to cross that bridge, and we'll cross when we right. get there. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, yeah. Guys, any final thoughts here before we wrap it up? Again, Patriots lose twenty to seven. Mac Jones hurts his back. Um, Kendrick Bourne uh, uh, doesn't play, and then plays one for one play, and then stops playing again, and has no idea why. Um, Patriots turn the ball over three times. Blah, 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 blah. Not a lot of good coming out of today. Alex you did make a good point. Your defense gives up 13 points. That's usually yeah. good enough to win. Um, any final thoughts here before we wrap it, guys? Something has to change. If nothing ever changes, then we're going to have this conversation for 18 straight weeks. That's the worst. It's like the first 45 That's... games of the Celtics season. I don't want right. to do I don't want to do 15 of these shows. Yeah. Something's well, got to change, and we got to wait and see what Max back is first, and then we go from there. But, yeah. I, I'd make my final point kind of in this, this the same vein, but I mean, it's two years of this. It's everything that right. was a hallmark for 20 years is suddenly their biggest issue. Situational football starting, you know, starting strong, not turning the football over Precision. penalties, timeouts, yeah. everything that they hung their hat on, everything that we were told was the Patriot way. And was the reason that they were getting over these other teams. So everything we gave do. bill credit for, sorry to cut you off. That's everything no, we gave. Bill that's credit exactly for. the point. That's exactly right. the point. And it's not like, they suddenly don't care about it or anything. They just can't do it. So yeah. that's and, and this this goes back to 2020. So it's nothing. It's nothing new. And I, I can sit here and say, well, it's uncharacteristic. So you think it'll change? But I yeah. think after saying that for two years, it's characteristic now, and you have to wonder if it would change. My final thought. I actually, you know, I don't love a lot about today, but I actually thought in the my, my nightmare scenario, it could have gone a good bit worse, and that the worst case scenario would have been that the defense got got lit up too, and Miami was running free all game, and Tua and Waddle just went for two hundred each, yeah. and everything yeah. looked hideous. So that was my worst case scenario: is that they looked bad on both sides of the ball, got their doors blown off. They weren't. It could be a bit of a slog, but there's reason to believe that there's going to be some competitive games ahead. And if you just clean it up a little, again. The problem here is you're used to different things in New England. I think the ceiling is still is relatively low for this team, but there's no reason that they can't turn it around and remain competitive, particularly early part of the season here where they do have a bit of a favorable favorable schedule. Real quick, 
Athletic Greens. Go get some. It's a terrific supplement. 75 vitamins and supplements all in one here. Great for your health, mental clarity, uh, digestion, uh, you know, uh, and uh, uh, Im uh, immune system. Athleticgreens.com slash garden. Free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs. Go get some. Once again, Patriots lose. I want to thank Alex Barth from 98.5 The Sports Hub. Go check his stuff out on our website, um, on his website, 98.5 Sports Hub. He's obviously writing a ton about this game uh, and we'll have podcasts and all sorts of things uh, coming up here. Uh, we'll also have Patriots beat. When are you guys doing that? Tuesday? Probably. Yeah. Tuesday. My lights went out, so the lights are going out on this show. We will see. And Mike Cadlick, of course, uh, writer for CLNSmedia.com covering the Patriots. Ryan Spagnoli was here as well. He is gone, uh, but he and Alex will be back in a couple of days with Patriots Beat, so make sure you check it out.